Hi, and welcome to Micronaut Monday. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I Am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee, and Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Star and the Solar Legion. I'm also the author of Witchman, a new superhero comic book. The Witchman Kickstarter campaign is in its final days. So if you would like to be a part of this campaign and, and support this exciting new project, follow the link in the show notes below. We're in the post-Michael Golden era of Micronauts, uh, but he's still doing the covers. And uh, this is another great one. Look at how luscious Marionette and Arcturus Rand's hairstyles are. Complete disco fever. It just just looks amazing. They came from Inner Space, the Micronauts, issue 14. And it's it is it's really nice having uh, Golden's presence uh, through this book uh, on the covers. And so when you know in those issues where you know the art isn't quite up to your expectations, you get a little taste of what the Michael Golden version might have been like, and, and, and you can maybe sort of imagine. Uh, that whole thing like applied to the rest of the issue. Yeah, I think if I won the lottery or something, that that might be what I'd do is um, commission Michael Golden to redraw all of the issues of Micronauts that he didn't draw, or maybe just you know certain ones, because because there there are some really sharp looking issues of Micronauts further down the line, but some of them you, you just really feel that absence of Michael Golden, and of course his contribution to the storytelling. I mean. You know, these the stories in these post-Golden uh, Issues, they're all right. Uh, you know, some are better than others, but but they're, they're nothing like the magic that was going on just two issues ago. Bill Mantlo, author. Howard Chaikin, layouts. Bob Sharon, colors. Annette Kowecki, letters. Al Milgram, editor and finisher. Jim Shooter, six feet, seven inches. I wonder how many other editor inkers there are in mainstream comics how many how many uh people have done what al milgram does where he's he's the editor of the book and he also inks it and and doesn't you know doesn't do any other part of the process you know i'm not talking about like writer artist editor uh types like jack kirby and it's also interesting the credits in the michael golden issues would give michael golden you know, storyteller credit. This issue, Howard Chaikin does not get that kind of credit. So I wonder if that's why he's not contributing to the story. So we're getting sort of a glimpse of maybe what a Micronauts comic would look like without the story contributions of Michael Golden. It's all right. It's just, it's not magic. And, and those first 12 issues are magic. Aesthetically, it's Howard Chaikin doing layouts and then Al Milgram putting the finishes on there. And Al Milgram is something of a chameleon uh, style wise. So I think a lot of like the surface style is coming from him where sort of the, the nuts and bolts composition is, is Howard Chaikin. I feel like Al is in Ditko mode here that, that, um, the, the Ditko Micronauts annual was pretty good. It was a pretty, pretty good fit. And I feel like Al probably felt, okay, I, I can't replicate what Golden was doing and, and, and I can't turn these Howard Chaikin layouts into something that looks like uh, uh, Michael Golden, but I can take them and turn them into Ditko. A hot time on the old world. So this is part two of the bug two-parter. And uh, the, the first 12 issues of Micronauts are a nice, you know, just really clean, complete story. Uh, but if you add issue 13 and this issue 14, it thoroughly closes the book on it, you know, because the, the one little thing that was left dangling, which I, th I thought was kind of fun, was that all the Micronauts think Bug is dead. And the reader thought Bug was dead, too. And then on the last page, you get this little surprise twist that he's still alive. And, and to me, that's satisfying enough as an ending. But this one, at least you get to sort of, you know, bring it all the way to the home stretch. So Bug is uh, starting a little revolution on his world, which has been taken over, colonized by Baron Karza's troops. A cool, you know, battle with the Phobos unit. Bug's planet is called Calaclac. Feels like another shout out to Jack Kirby with his sort of, uh, you know, green cricket-like, you know, grasshopper-like uh, bug character. 
in Commandy Last Boy on Earth, click clack. Bug's girlfriend, Jasmine, takes over a plane. Now, you know, we have another sort of Star Wars element where now this sort of ground battle gives way to an aerial battle. We're back on Homeworld. The Micronauts have decided to, you know, get back together and leave, leave the planet in the hands of Force Commander and Slug. This angle, you know, I mean, when you're drawing a centaur, you gotta be very careful about what angles you choose and, uh, you know, it, it can just look like, like a disaster. And, uh, you know, Michael Golden's centaurs uh, looked amazing. And uh, this, this one looks a little bit ridiculous just with this almost head-on view. We're getting a little recap of some of the things that have happened in, in previous issues. And now the HMS Endeavor has set sail into the cosmos. Chart a course for somewhere we've never been, Biotron. You know, they were brought together by necessity, but now they realize they are a family and exploring the universe in the HMS Endeavor, it was a necessity before. It was, it was sort of something forced on them by circumstances, but they realize that's, that's where they're happiest. And so they're gonna take off to explore the universe. And this time around, Arcturus Rand sort of gets a second chance because the first time he explored the universe on that thousand year journey, he never got to explore it in person or, or only like intermittently got to explore it in person. Most of that time was spent in a cryo sleep where he could explore telepathically via Biotron, who he had that psionic connection with. And they pass by uh, the Acroyer homeworld of Spartak. We cut back to the other dangling subplot, which, which has been moving extremely slowly, uh, of that S.H.I.E.L.D. has a suitcase full of dead Micronauts, and they're gonna bring them to a party in New York, and we see in person uh, that party is the Fantastic Four. And in interviews, Michael Golden had, had cited as like one of the reasons he left the book was that editorial was trying to take it in more of a superhero direction. He wanted it to be more of a uh, science fiction story that didn't have much, if any, dealings with the Marvel Universe, but uh, the powers that be felt that like, no, this, this is where the action is. We gotta make this you know, fully integrated into the Marvel Universe. And that ends up being really successful for Rom. Rom uh, really flourishes as a result of being part of the Marvel Universe, not so much the Micronauts. So yeah, now we got uh, the Fantastic Four involved and there's gonna be some, some issues coming up with where we see that play out. Now we have like this really nice splash. And again, you know, if I didn't know better, I would think this was Ditko, just the sort of approach to sci-fi architecture and, and the mark making. And yeah, it's not bad. This, this is fun. And, you know, speaking of Star Wars, this ad here, just super nostalgic for me, even though I was like, you know, two years old when this was going on. This um, dog fight is going on and in one of the ships is Bug's father. And, you know, before they introduced, you know, Darth Vader saying, I am your father to Luke Skywalker, Bug's arch enemy was his father saying, I'll get rid of that worthless whelp once and for all. Bug pulls a fast one on him and splits the, the ship into a bunch of pieces as the toy does. And it kind of, it's just enough to kind of throw Wartstaff off his game and, and he crashes, presumably to his death. And um, Bug's not all that broken up about it. Daddy? Oh, even he deserved better. Um, they're infiltrating the palace and we see these sort of like Roman senator kind of figures in there. Nothing must be left behind to fall into the hands of those slime spawned insectivorid savages. Savages we may be, guy, but slime spawned? Nah. We used to be hatched right here in this room before you took over and made it into your filthy command center. Th that voice, I know that voice. Add for Rom. And, you know, we get some, you know, Star Wars style action. Baron Karza's governor of, of the world, Calaclac, along with Bug's dad, you and my daddy turned me over to Karza's dog soldiers, knowing I'd end up in the pleasure pits. 
Uh, this guy's begging for mercy, but there, there's none to be had. Bug isn't giving any. And Bug asks if anybody else wants a taste of that, and they say, not us. The governor's bodyguard unit was the only thing keeping us loyal, and they've fled. We've wanted out of this assignment ever since the rebellion on Homeworld. What rebellion? What are you talking about? You mean you don't know? Why, we thought you were the advancing liberation forces. Baron Karza is dead, slain according to prophecy by the son of Homeworld's deities, Commander Arcturus Ran. Karza's rule ended weeks ago. Where have you been? In the forest, plotting out my revenge against a colonial despot. But it's all over now, Bug. We don't have to fight anymore. We're free. Free. Yeah, we are, aren't we? So maybe a little anticlimactic for Bug. He was maybe hoping to kind of, you know, you know, fight his way through all these guys and then link up with his Micronaut buddies and, and continue the fight against Karza. But the war's over, Bug. And you won. Well, what are we waiting for, me buggos? Let's plunder and have ourselves a party. Yay, Bug! So now a ship approaches the HMS Endeavor. And look who it is. It's a Croyer and Lady Silesia. They've joined the Micronauts. So the roster is filling out. And they're kind of, you know, grieving once again the loss of Bug and saying, you know, it's great to all be back together, but it's really not the same without him. And then Biotron has some news for them. Bug lives and he's having the time of his life. It's happily ever after for the Micronauts. Next issue, the four most fantastic guest stars of all. And meet the Micromakers, Howie Chaikin. So we get a little background here on Howard Chaikin, who, um, you know, according to this letters column, is signed on for a five-issue arc with the Micronauts. So we're two issues in. And yeah, next issue, Into the Microverse for the fabulous Fantastic Four, as they and the marvelous Micronauts meet for the first time in deadly combat against the sinister Psycho Man. Miss it at your own peril, Pilgrims. And it makes complete sense since the Fantastic Four were the first Micronauts. Uh, that's what Reed says in, in an old issue of Fantastic Four from the 60s. He built a craft that could you know, shrink them down and they, they could take a ride in the Microverse. It was referred to as the Microverse. And they were going off to fight Psycho Man who lived in the Microverse which um, they later changed the name to Subatomica, but initially it was the Microverse. And, you know, you can never take that away from them. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I Am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee, and Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Starr and the Solar Legion. I'm also the author of Witchman, a new superhero comic book, which is in the last days of its Kickstarter campaign. If you'd like to be a part of this exciting campaign and want to support it with a pledge, follow the link in the show notes below. I'll see you next time for Micronaut Monday.